Life service video games are making me mad. They're polluting the ocean, wiping out the orcas, and they're destroying my bank account. And here's how we could stop them. And you, you have to stop it. Never mind. This might be one of the greatest games I've ever played. Life service is ruining gaming. Triple A gaming stinks. Triple A life service has ruined my marriage. These are all things you might have heard over the last couple years, and the discussion is getting very tiresome to many. Just one time, I hope to find you working. Just once. Do you believe in reincarnation? Oh! So, what is it? Are these games really killing the orcas? He should f***ing die. Or is it just old man yells at cloud again? God damn, Mr. <laughs> Fredrickson. And to those questions, yes and yes. I love fence sitting because now I don't have to piss anyone off again. Of course, there's more nuance to this question floating with text on the screen. And I've been an observer to the live service takeover when Fortnite went free in 2017. When I was in like 10th grade or was it 9th? I don't know anymore when Big Chungus is funny, okay? Big, big Chungus, Big Chungus. <laughs> but recently I played one of the worst live service games of all time and then right after maybe one of the best games I've ever played Holy shit a real whiplash. So if there's a better time to talk about live service games, it's now. I also got no choice because at the time of writing this video, I can't even connect to the servers of Helldivers 2 because everyone in the world is trying to spread democracy at the same time. We're losing the war, guys. Stop fighting the bugs and fight the robots. Go away, Flair! Life service games have been a thing for a while. Just a lot of younger people didn't play them because PC gaming wasn't popular yet. Or your parents saw South Park and thought you would become a basement dweller or something. Oh my god. Thank you, thank you, I love you so much, mom. Now let's go shoot strippers in GTA instead. This was the World of Warcraft, the RuneScapes, etc. These weren't games that had a new one to buy every other year, like a Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield, or any sports game. But you rather paid a subscription and they would add new stuff in the game to play, or had paid expansions creating replay value. You talk to a dinosaur and they'll either say that these were the golden days, or that it was the lowest point of their life. College doesn't matter. It's a dice roll, really. These games were successful. People still grind them to this day. Then 2009, we got League of Legends, free-to-play, competitive multiplayer, and they made their money by in-game skins. Really the first to pioneer the cool free-to-play cash cow model. But once again, PC gaming wasn't mainstream yet. And if you ask literally anyone about this game, uh, you don't get a dice roll. They just all hate their lives and are addicted. CSGO releases in 2012. Cost $15, and then in 2013, skins were added. You get these skins with in-game crates. The crates cost money, though, and then you gotta buy keys to open them that also cost money. So you spend 13 bucks to get a 13 cent skin, but you could potentially make the money back, especially if you get a knife. In 2016, when I was like 14, I got a butterfly knife when I ran the game on a terrible laptop that got 14 frames a second. This is what you do. Okay, whenever you're at a store, you know. Then I sold it to buy Steam games in 2017. And when I checked on that knife a year ago, it 10 times the price. I understand why McSkillet did what he did. Never mind. I take it back. I always thought the McLaren was overrated. The trend was fully paid games, adding loot crate monetization that would then just get a new game next year anyway. 2K, FIFA, Madden. Then you got games like Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Battlefront 2, Overwatch, Halo 5, Rainbow Six Siege. Oh no. The live service games that cost money were still adding stuff you could buy in replacement of traditional cosmetic progression systems. But the real problem was that some of these had pay to win models, which was messing up some of the games. But companies were making tons of money, but not boatloads. Because in 2017, we got Fortnite. Speed run time, okay? Free to play, battle royale, PUBG and H1Z1 were popular on Twitch, and were also battle royales, but only on PC, and this was before streaming was the job every 10 year old kid wanted. But now Fortnite is on console, and a lot of people have consoles. It was really fun because wins had a lot of impact, and people loved putting them on their Snapchat story. Guilty as charged. It's also free, and kids only get games on Christmas and their birthday. So now I can play with all the cool kids, even though I'm broke. Then they put skins in the game like League of Legends, the the win game win. But then they also put in a battle pass system in season two with optional cosmetics that only cost ten dollars. Adding a progression system with skins for only ten dollars in a free game—that's a steal. So power in numbers. A lot more people are playing the game because the only thing people risk to lose is their time. And time is extremely valuable. And I prefer to waste it. The game got so popular that the hottest mainstream musician in the world played with a nerd Twitch streamer. This was Drake because this was in March. And the real hottest musician in the world dropped two bangers in June. It went so well that the nerdy Twitch streamer became the best Twitch streamer. This was then though. Uh, nowadays he talks about the low taper fade that 
he did not get. Is that that low taper fade, like, meme is, dude, it is still massive. So, now it's not nerdy to be a Twitch streamer or a PC gamer. Hallelujah, my 2K hours on Gmod could come out the shadows. Streamers become celebrities overnight, which led to content, 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 Fortnite, 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 money, 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 money. money, money. money. Then, of course, the vultures saw this, and instead of having beautiful big titty but naked women falling out of the sky, instead came down battle passes and everything. Some games were still scared to go free to play. Call of Duty made a battle royale and added a battle pass, but the game was still $60, so it died. Blackout, a battle royale, never seen those. Is this a good one? Fuck no. And Fortnite wanted to make more money, so they put the game on your iPhone 8. I'm gonna see my news for that iPhone 8. <laughs> I will never stop talking about Breaking Bad. Until someone did a spell to bring Steve Jobs back to life, and he said, take that shit down. Then Epic Games ended console racism in 2018, and they made it so everybody could play with everyone, and kept dropping battle passes in new seasons. They just kept making more money. One lay up and they treat me like I'm Luka Doncic. The cheat code is to now make live service games, but have them free and charge money in a progression system where no one can now complain because the game is free. CSGO saw the trend and went free to play, even though Valve did the exact same thing in 2011 with the TF2. They, they just forgot, I guess. Gaben kept waking up from naps after his employees knocked his ass out like the farmer from Barnyard. What are you, president of his fan club? <laughs> no, that would be your And now he's here to f us. Some did not see this trend and wanted to hold on to paid gaming, so they made shit last minute battle royales in their paid games. Battlefield 5, Fallout 76. I, I would be surprised if anyone remembers that. Even though it was free, CSGO had like a really bad battle royale as well. The studio behind Paladins made a free to play battle royale with chickens for some reason. Later, Fortnite would respark the trend with the chicken from Family Guy. The CEO of Respawn came in, asked who was making Titanfall 3, shot him in the head, took the assets, and told the team to make a battle royale or their family's next. Then Cliff Mazinski made a battle royale. <laughs> and it ruined his life. Respawn launched Apex Legends and it did great. And when you look around, everyone was falling in line. Destiny 2 went free to play, following the trend in making money off expansions and microtransactions. Call of Duty tried again after Black Ops 4, making the game free this time with the battle pass. And it was a hit during the time where old people were dying left and right. Carball even went free to play after getting bought by Epic Games, where later they would add Lightning McQueen. They said they were 18. That's the truth. Who the fuck is 18 in the seventh grade? Oh, you're in high school? Could have fooled me. I mentioned Fortnite because it was the big dog that started a chain reaction of bad live service games by being successful. Even before Fortnite, you had really good live service models that were also free to play. Like Warframe and Path of Exile that came out in 2013 that even now both have a ton of content that you can also play for free. And for even paid live service games, there were a ton of good ones. Rainbow Six Siege was having a lot of updates and content. Rust was constantly changing and innovating. Being free to play doesn't automatically make you a good live service game, but it does add armor to your bad decisions. Apex Legends added a Mexican that would do drugs and hop walls. Uh, then they went stale for a while, and this was due to resources and respawn going towards their new Star Wars game. So updates were slow and people got annoyed. But when a game isn't free to play, it's even more annoying when content comes at a snail's pace. Battlefront 2, after having a terrible business model, revamped their whole game while taking ages to add new content in a paid game. It was a hard and long road, but by the end things were looking bright. And then they pulled the plug to shoot themselves in the head again with Battlefield because DICE just loves challenge and pushing boulders up hills. I don't get it. Halo 5 was missing a ton of features at launch, and the live service was adding that missing content from old games in the same game. While at fast pace compared to what we got now, it was annoying at the time. But the content is free, it's free DLC. Well, even if it is free, it's still not an excuse to go at snail's pace because that's how you lose your audience. GTA Online, while I know having a lot of resources, was still dropping tons of content in its prime. Fortnite even still is constantly changing and being fresh. Dude, people thought this game was gonna die like 20 times and it's still around. People thought Siege was completely dead. Then a guy started talking about his Johnson while falling out of his chair, and now it's one of the most streamed games by a single person. I don't even play the damn game, and I know all the callouts and how the operators work. But now we're in the dark ages of live service, where a lot of stuff is now pissing me off. Old man Black, yells at cloud. Bitch. Yes, old man yells at cloud, because when live service is bad to a game that's cool, it sucks a lot. A live service model is one of the worst models a game could be announced to have, because it creates a 50-50 coin toss, where even the best games could be ruined and only left with greed. Most AAA live service models right now are made out of greed with no player first intentions. People are starting to get sick of it, and to counteract this annoyance, straw mans are being fabricated that gamers just complain and want to hate everything but this is total bullshit blizzard is low-hanging fruit donkey said it best every employee is fired or is going to jail drinking breast milk like homelander what the hell is wrong with you people but overwatch 2 goes free to play overlaps overwatch 1 where you can't even play it anymore while also removing content then they remove the loot crate progression system that gave you a chance at least to get cosmetics randomly for free and instead replace it with skins in an item shop for absurd amounts of money then they add a battle pass that you have to pay for then they stop making 
making the content they have been saying they're making for years and they give you what they've done so far but charge you for it fuck overwatch 2 something something too mad joke look halo infinite goes free to play makes a bunch of promises then they don't deliver on it and go away for a whole year what they still do though is sell progression systems attached to paid battle passes with some free events sprinkled in over time with new seasons they add base content that should have been in the game already at an unbelievable snail's pace after the first game came out in 2015 and they messed up again it makes halo 5's roadmap look like a godsend they see their player base is dwindling so they scrap the campaign dlc slowly add player friendly abilities like cross core progression but not all at once just little by little because they can't have you making too much cool stuff because they still want you to buy things in the item shop sold at ridiculous amounts of money for a first person game and if you don't buy them in time they're just gonna vault it vaulting the same stuff you used to be able to get for free in a real game with a real progression system that came out in 2010 by the way also they're even more greedy now a normal progression battle pass is chopped down reduced to five dollars which is just a reskin of the assault rifle and then they sell the skins that you would have gotten a normal ten dollar battle pass in the item shop for sixty dollars sixty dollars for four skins in a first person game with content that should have been in the base game coming out of snail's pace with a still broken ass theater mode terrible color customization that doesn't allow you choice so that choice can be sold to you same with the emblem customization greedy ass core limitation being spoon fed screw this game and some have the audacity to say that my video from 2021 has aged like milk because they fixed the game adding a dmr that was in every other halo game after reach as well as content from old halo games in the span of almost two years while still being greedy pieces of shit like yes let's clap let's clap they added an infection so that you could sell a bunch of infection skins 343 isn't saving this game they put more effort in the sold cosmetics than the game itself i'm not spinning up at jiggling car keys halo master chief collection had a better progression system with old and new cosmetics and the games that used to cost money that have real progression systems still shit all over this malicious ass game fuck halo infinite then we got cs2 overlapping csgo where they remove content from csgo while adding new operation crates while the game is still struggling with tick rates and hit reg and you can't go back and play csgo because it doesn't exist anymore you would have to roll back updates and go play offline battlefront 2042 had a battle pass while being unfinished and even years later they're still sticking to that model battlefront 2 died for this mw3 being a dlc game in itself at full price then has a battle pass that costs money and then has a bonus battle pass on top of that to play as rick grimes in first person to then have item shop weapons that cost like shitloads, almost like 20 dollars remember when map packs used to cost like 15 bucks and they had to be good otherwise people wouldn't buy them and they lose money we're past that now destiny 2 poor quality expansions that are expensive with extremely malicious microtransactions great job bungie diablo 4 a full price game with overpriced microtransactions that cost more than the actual game and it, it's just a horse 343 adding like 60 dollars stuff is bad but at least that game is free this is a full paid game with this much like this <laughs> payday 3 having no content and a terrible skill tree to then also be abandoned where payday 2 had content for years and even now has more player base a lot of games aren't just live free services anymore but rather full price games with live service models that only want to juice you multiverses died and have the wrong mindset with a battle pass in a unfinished game and they paid for it the game's dead but at least it was free mortal kombat 1 though was not free and is lacking content from previous titles but you could buy fatalities in the item shop redfall was unfinished still launched is now probably going to be abandoned and then recently suicide squad killed the justice league rocksteady known for making legendary batman games didn't even want to make this game they wanted to make a batman beyond game and a superman game but they had to make a live service game so born was this and where metropolis is pretty and i see the vision the game is held back by its non-player friendly structure not because you killed the justice league and the kill the justice league game or any other excuses the game is horrible because of its stop and go game loop no end game content terrible content in general that consists of repetitive defend this rescue these people and do this but in a way that doesn't take advantage of its sandbox a non-satisfying campaign with once again a stop and go pace a bad co-op experience where no one really collaborates with one another besides opening forced progression doors annoying spongy enemies shitty loot mechanics item shop the ui is a nightmare the enemy types suck the boss fights are a joke so much so that the final boss is a repeat of the flash boss with the future having even more of those copy paste boss fights all of this with the intention to be the next live service shooter where they add new characters and expansions it's a rock city game with that sole part of rock city ripped out of it a game that reeks of never wanting to exist but rather being forced to in the same vein as the avengers game made to make money first rather than be a video game even gotham knights chose to be linear the thing holding that game back was its combat playing like a live service game if you want a breath of fresh air play the guardians of the galaxy game a good linear game with a fun game loop that could have blown this game out of the water with the sequel if it got a chance to fix its oversights and expand but it flopped after the headache that was the avengers game where everyone thought that this game was doomed and guess what you could actually get cosmetics in the game they didn't have to do it people love the movies they sure as hell would have paid 20 bucks to be chris pratt but guess what you could still get them for free because ados montreal aren't scumbags
And now recently, you have this new Ubisoft pirate game, Skull and Bones, that claims to be a quadruple A game made over the last 10 years, and it's dull and boring. And another annoying fail at live servers, where you can't even get off your ship like Sea of Thieves, or have unique combat like Black Wake or Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Live service games are soulless, lacking content and care, spending money on things to take advantage of the consumer. They all need to burn and go away. All right, this might be one of the best co-op games I've ever played. Straight to the point, Hell Divers is amazing. You need to buy it, get your friends to buy it. It's why I wanted to make this video. It's what live service games need to be, and I can't wait to see what happens with it in the future. I'm a gaming pessimist, said to be a corporate hater. And time after time again, we see companies that were once beloved fall. Either be a fox in the hen house or higher ups just getting greedy. And for now, Arrowhead is the next Bungie. A studio making a game that they want to make with good ethics. Like the CEO making a statement that they won't overhire in the limelight of success due to them not wanting to lay off people down the line, like Bungie. Or that same CEO warning some people not to buy the game due to the server problems. It's a breath of fresh air. Before Helldivers 2, Arrowhead, a Swedish game developer, only released four games that were made in a top-down style. One of those being the original Helldivers made for the PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. A handheld PlayStation console before they got lazy and relied on cloud play. The game released back on March 3rd, 2015. It's almost been nine years since the last Helldivers game. To show you the time passed, it came out the same year as The Force Awakens, Fallout 4, Battlefront, and Black Ops 3. And Recently, they launched Helldivers 2, exclusive to PS5 and PC. Why am I talking like a f***ing boring video essayist? It's been a grand slam. You know it's been a grand slam, probably because you couldn't play it. The main problem with the game is that it's suffering from success like DJ Khaled. God, Gatorade. The servers can't handle the amount of people playing the game, because the game was never meant to blow up as big as it did. I forgot to mention that Arrowhead is a small company, and that Helldivers 2 is surprisingly an indie game. I don't blame you for not being able to tell. It has incredible polish. Some bugs for sure, like Pennywise hijacking your match and possessing all the bugs to fly. All the fucking bugs are flying. Master, the little pigeon rats. The shadow the pigeon rats are making them. a float. Sir, I think Pennywise is in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, float too. Yo, float too. Oh, oh, my God. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell? Did anyone just see what the fucking <laughs> ship just flung on my screen? <laughs> And yeah, server issues for sure, but at least I don't find myself dealing with rubber banding or having a bad time playing with people from different regions. I played with Ducky from the hot hell holes of Australia, and we were cruising. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right right. And when I say indie game, I mean it. Arrowhead is really transparent. They have 120 worker ants and 30 paid vacation days. By the way, the average American worker gets 11 paid vacation days to show you how charitable they are for their team. The original Helldivers peaked at a max player count of 6,691 at once on Steam in 2015. Helldivers 2 has peaked at 457,000 on Steam, not including PS5 when I was scripting this video. Yeah, there's a shitload of people playing and the game's only been out for a month. And yeah, there's some marketing for the game by PlayStation, and yeah, it's backed by PlayStation, but this is a situation of PlayStation getting lucky. Buying in early, partnering with Arrowhead back in 2013 when they were Joe Blow. Now the studio has made one of the most popular games of the year, breaking a PlayStation exclusive record on Steam. I say this because it wasn't PlayStation that made the game explode. Helldivers 2 blew up from word to mouth, similar to a game like Lethal Company, which only happens when people enjoy a product so much that they spread it around. The motto of Arrowhead Games on their website is that a game for everyone is a game for no one. With CEO Johan Palestet also saying, you have to earn the right to monetize. I truly believe that. Helldivers 2 is a game that is reminiscent of the Xbox 360 era. A game like Halo 3 or Gears of War that is confident and made with the goal of fun, rather than trying to get the most outreach to get the most profit by in-game skins. No one knew what Helldivers was, and the only reason people know about it now is because of the quality of its game. The game is transparent, no single player campaign, it's made for co-op by a studio that does co-op games, and it costs $40. And with that $40, you get a full game at launch. Nowadays, you don't even get that for $70 with most AAA games. Fucking Suicide Squad. As stated by the CEO, you have to earn the right to monetize, so Helldivers 2 is a game first. And what the 120 person staff has done is incredible. Helldivers 2 as a game is embarrassing to the market right now, similar to what we saw with a game like Baldur's Gate 3. It's making ex-devs for other game studios come out, putting their ex-publishers on blast, making the Halo fandom sad again for what they could have had. For a day. 
Then they went back to getting mad at running in a video game. Helldivers 2 nails down the four pillars of greatness when it comes to making a live service game. Immersion, progression, community, and potential. A game mixed with Halo, ODSTs, Planetside, Titanfall, Warhammer 40k, tabletop games, Left 4 Dead, Starship Troopers, Battlefront, hell even the Clone Wars, Vietnam action scenes, sci-fi, Wolfenstein. The game is a typical male fantasy based on taking a last stand hoping to die in a brutal but cool way. Made to be interactive, tense, and stressful. Even the basic of tasks requires you to be interactive. Making a bombing run can feel desperate and stressful. Calling for evacuation isn't clicking a button and then running away because the wrong dance dance revolution sequence could cost you your life. I compared it to Left 4 Dead because it has the same type of game loop. People fighting toward a common goal where you have to lock in due to the game getting unpredictable and overwhelming. Valve made a game system algorithm for Left 4 Dead called the Director that would spawn enemies and loot depending on how you were progressing. Too much of a cakewalk and the game gets harder. If it gets too difficult, more loot drops are spawned in. So you can have more ways to hold the line. In an interview with PlayStation Access, Deputy Game Director Sugar Baroshi explained the system for Helldivers 2 like Dungeons and Dragons, where he sees the flow of the game to be dictated by a dungeon master. Like the director in Left 4 Dead 2, Helldivers also has a game master. But along with the game master are real life tools where developers can oversee people playing and even interact with players. This adds immersion because surprisingly the AI is incredible. Not flawless, you got floating bugs and robots going on Age of Ultron monologues, but it's still incredible. The game can at times have calm periods as you push from one side of the map to the other, collecting your thoughts and resupplying your ammo. And you will value these moments since the game makes your resources really matter. If you reload, you lose the whole mag, even if there's ammo in it. If you spam missiles and airstrikes all at once, everything is now on a timer when you might need it in a crucial moment. You have limited lives, so that you can still have fun in the sandbox and mess around killing each other with explosives and friendly fire. Another loose end. What? Josh. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also important to manage your lives because you might get in a situation where you got only a couple lives or no lives remaining where you still need to complete an objective making you gotta lock in like a game seven the way the game is designed makes it so now these situations get tense in a fun way fighting to the last mag is gonna happen you're gonna switch to your secondary for an emergency explosives are important the railgun is gonna be your baby you will have last stand moments chaos will always be there and with this chaos you have variety you can play against difficult bugs that operate in a more zombie like manner that get overwhelming in groups or as the memes truly display you can fight the automatons that shoot back Against the bugs, you will use the airstrike for convenience. Against the automatons, you will use it off cooldown for survival. The game loop is seriously addictive. A PvE experience that feels like trench warfare at times, but then I'm in a Vietnam movie, and now I'm on Tatooine, and in the snow, and then I'm a clone trooper, and now I'm an ODST. It's cinematic. And what makes it even more cinematic is the gameplay. The way Helldivers 2 plays is genius. An over-the-shoulder, full 360 camera, third-person movement, and then with the third person, you have an optional first-person toggle for aiming if you got a lock-in on a shot. A dive mechanic that also works in 360 while shooting an aim. It makes me question how the hell AAA games haven't adapted to this type of style yet. Going back and playing Firefight and Halo or the Horde mode in Gears of War, even Destiny 2, doesn't feel good anymore. In Helldivers 2, you are a walking weapon. Your guns are heavy and impactful, your movement matters, and your life alone truly has an impact. You will always feel powerful from the awesome voice lines that once again have the amazing Yuri Lowenthal trying to get his bag with a true patriotic performance. It makes the immersion so much better, as well as how the enemies are designed with difficulty. Instead of making higher difficulties have sponge-like enemies like a COD Zombies, The Division, Gears of War, or Destiny, Helldivers instead chooses to be in the same vein as Left 4 Dead, where the enemies will have the same health, but there's just going to be more of them, and they will do more damage on higher difficulties. It makes it difficult and hectic, but not tedious. Get rid of sponge enemies, they suck. It's a genius way to tackle PvE, and it's even more impressive that this style came from a top-down predecessor. The last time innovation was big like this was from Warframe, to be honest, where movement was huge in that game. The movement is also affected by armor. You have heavy armors, light armors, and medium armors that all have different effects on how you could play and could be useful in different situations. For example, like medium armor is the best of both worlds. Heavy armor are better for like rockets and stuff. Lighter ones, you get more stamina and are better for tactical retreats. With that, let's mention the planets. In Helldivers 2, you can play in a ton of different environments and locations for both enemy types. And within each area you play in, the game will always feel fresh because of how it plays with people. Doing something simple like blowing up transport ships will have you going down paths of side objectives. And then you start making your own fun because all of a sudden you're pinned down and the best way to go about something is to just blow up the factory or do something else. You see an artillery cannon and you fill it up because you could use it to evac later. When you're playing against the automatons, they have outposts and are on patrols. You will make decisions to let them pass or to hold your ground. It makes from going planet to planet fresh. It makes the game loop fun. You know what game I was critical of for not having this? Starfield. A AAA studio also working on the game for like over seven years with over 400 employees with old shitty outdated combat had 
had empty planets the size of maps in Helldivers 2, but unlike Helldivers 2, they have nothing going on in them. The amount of content within each planet is incredible. Even rescuing civilians has more tension and fun than just putting them in Pokeballs like Suicide Squad. You can also explore around the maps looking for items, and in-game credits that can be used to buy items or even save up to get the premium battle pass, which we'll talk about in a second. The way Helldivers 2 plays is amazing. It's fun with friends, the game loop is great, but what else is great is the customization. With how much of a cesspit life service games have been, actually having something to grind for is nostalgic and makes you want to play the game more. It even has fun stupid shit, like in Halo Reach when you would rank up you got a different nameplate to stand out. In Helldivers 2 when you rank up you get different name titles as well. Little stuff like that goes a long way, like also being able to name your ship where I fly the wings of redemption. <laughs> By playing the game you get credits that can be spent on stratagems, the things you play Dance Dance Revolution to call in. You're not forced to slog through things you don't want, like other games. Instead you have a currency to spend what you want to spend on. Things are locked behind levels, but when you're able to purchase it, you do it with credits you earn for missions. So as long as you play the game, you get better bombs and turrets and different ways to vary how you want to play. And then you upgrade those items within the ship module. Samples are found in the game by extracting with them when you find them. So if you want to reduce cooldowns for sentries by 10%, you're going to pay 100 common samples and then 10 rare samples. Or then you pump your loading crew full of meth and ketamine and just pray to God they don't load into Overwatch 2. And the way to get these credits and samples is by playing the game. It's also the same way you get medals. Medals are how you progress to get normal items of the battle pass. The battle pass customization is similar to Halo MCC. It's free and you can't pay to skip tiers or anything. It's a real progression system that only progresses by playing the game and getting medals. And there's no FOMO. Both the original war bond and the premium war bond will never go away. Also like MCC, you're not forced to slog through bullshit you might not want. Unlike Halo Infinite that is stacked with useless bullshit no one cares about, you could skip through the useless bullshit and get guns and armor and still progress to the next page because you're not forced to max it out and instead you have a progression quota. You will progress through different armors and weapons all at the same time as getting new stratagems proving a great playing experience. Like a real video game, you are getting stronger as you play and getting more stuff to wear. Now for the paid war bond, it's smaller than the base progression system and can be acquired just by playing the game. I got up to 700 credits by progressing through the base war bond and got the other 300 by picking them up in game. You could get the equivalent of V-Bucks just by playing the game. You could also use super credits to get special items that are on rotation, but if you just want to cave in and buy it, an armor and helmet costs like 8 bucks if you choose to spend real life money, not 60 bucks like Halo. And as I just explained earlier, there's a real progression system and a leveling up system with no free to play elements. They have earned the right to monetize. And then you got community. Helldivers has everyone contributing to the game, all liberating together as one, filling that bar. We win together, we lose together. We aren't special or the main character, just a bunch of dumbasses killing each other. With modern gaming, you keep hearing this echo from people that even bad games can be fun with friends, and that's true. I had fun playing Suicide Squad because I made my own fun, but the game is chopped. Helldivers is fun with friends because it was made for co-op and is a good game. Got a good heart, so you get I'm gonna crush you with my pod. <laughs> it's no coincidence that developers without boots on their necks are making cool stuff. And if you look around right now, the gaming market is changing rapidly. Tons of layoffs because of high budgets, modern consoles are failing. It's the same problem as the movie industry right now. Live service has always been a thing, and it's always going to be a thing. It's easy to shove everything together when AAA lands its shuttle. But everything sucks, okay? Life sucks. And you got to take the good with the bad and pluck out the goods and stand them up to show everybody else that being creative and interesting can still get you gratitude. So what's the future of Helldivers? Will they keep with the updates? They're already adding mechs and warthogs, or is a fox gonna get let loose in the hen house? I don't know, but for now, I'm gonna enjoy my time. Subscribe or I'm taking your railgun. Thank you to the Patreons who give me their credit card info, and click here to watch a video about the strong silent types in video games. I just got hit with a 50k tax bill, 300 racks in a year, how does that feel?